friends, welcome to this unboxing of the Marguerite Peterson Tarot. It is November 1st, 2017. Uh, this is Jenny coming to you from my kitchen. I've been really looking forward to reviewing this deck. I've seen it online and I couldn't wait to order it. I ordered it from Amazon. Uh, the package arrived today. The uh, package came from Austria, actually. So how exciting is that? You know, when I was a kid, we couldn't even imagine getting packages in the mail that we order something from Amazon and they come from countries all over the world. It's, it's really fun, really exciting, the times we live in. So without any further delay, let's get to unboxing the Marguerite Peterson Tarot. I'd like to share with you first my autumnal display. I'm gonna just put the lights down real quickly so you can get a little, a little, uh, effect of how it looks so you can enjoy it <laughs> there how's that the tarot box is here so just for a little uh, seasonal um, ambiance I hope you enjoy it. I've been enjoying this display this week. A little bit of a diversion from the serious business of the unboxing video. Okay, let me get my lights and we'll get back to it. to shift the focus here down to the tarot deck. I've been really excited to get this deck. I enjoy decks that are a little more abstract and allow you to use your imagination a little bit more. So I think this is going to fit the bill for me as a deck that's uh, going to allow me to use my intuition, my imagination, and I think I'm going to really enjoy this deck. Now, as you can see, I just removed the uh, plastic, so you'll be discovering this along with me. Okay, we have the Marguerite Peterson Tarot, 78 cards and booklet. This is the English version. In her own ingenious way, Marguerite Peterson has created and lived the tarot cards since 79. The Berlin-based artist succeeded in creating new archetypal motifs, although or perhaps because she has often broken with traditional imagery. Various forms of contemporary art and spirituality, as well as the traditional structure contributed to the paintings. 78 cards accompanied by an instruction booklet from AGM, made in Belgium, tarotworld.com Okay. This is so much fun. Here are my cards. A very nice size. Oversized deck, I would say. Uh, it comes with a little white book. that seems fairly substantial. I have not reviewed the book in advance. So let's see what we have in the book here. We have a foreword, an introduction, the Major Arcana special section on the court cards. Well, that's good because court cards are difficult for me to really uh, wrap my mind around. So I appreciate them having a special section on the court cards. And then the pip cards, a section on how to use the tarot. Within the Labyrinth of Tarot, tarot by Luisa Francia. Oh gosh, I'm going to have to read this and do another video when I've worked with this deck and done a few readings with it. So we have a little bit of information on the 22 Major Arcana. The Fool. Different meanings that can be attributed to the Fool.
You are young and far away from home, a glittering crack. Heaven, sun and clouds and foaming waters, the elements at play, blue breath. Risk finding the way to yourself. Engage yourself where chaos begins, where you stand alone and without help, facing life. And then the next card's magic. There's a little poem. Oh, this is just lovely. The High Priestess, there's a poem relating to the High Priestess. The Empress, oh wow, this is wonderful. The Emperor. So we have poetry. And I don't know about you, but to me, poetry seems to uh, be a perfect match for a, a deck that's more abstract. The court cards. She says she chose the terms mother, daughter, mother, father, daughter, and son on purpose because we are all familiar with them. They constitute our mandala, our sphere. Even if our family is far away, we always carry a part of the family vibration within. On the one hand, I use the terms mother, father, daughter, and son in the literal sense, but on the other hand, as a metaphor. A metaphor is a bridge. Sometimes you have to distance yourself and forget everything in order to find the bridge to yourself. The family is not everything, but it is a part of the fabric from which we are all woven. Very cool. All right. So there's a little bit of information. I don't want to spend a lot of time on it. I mean, I do want to spend a lot of time on it, but I just don't have that much time to dedicate to reading the book to you. Okay, then we have information on the pip cards. The 78 cards of the deck are all interconnected and interrelated. While the major arcana symbolize transpersonal experiences in the court, cards show the social net, the minor arcana represent the many levels of daily life. Okay, so she discusses the four elements, which is great, that's how I relate to the tarot. The earth element is represented by coins or discs. The fire element, traditionally wands, symbolize the fire element. The air element, traditionally Swords symbolize the air element. I use the image of the feather. I can work with that. And the water element. Traditionally, the water element is symbolized by cups. In my paintings, I sometimes use the image of the lotus or shell. Water always becomes water again. It vaporizes, turns into clouds, rains, rivers, oceans, and springs. It always exists at water as water. On a physical level, the water element represents everything fluid. Blood, saliva, urine, tears, sweat, menstrual blood, semen, and other secretions. On a mental psychic level, the water elements represents dreams, intuition, feelings, moods, love, sorrow, fear, openness, and reflection. Wonderful, wonderful. Let me go back to um, the air element. Traditionally, swords symbolize the air element. I use the image of the feather. The air element is infinite and invisible. It stands for agility and lightness. On a physical level, the air element represents the breath and the movement of breath within the body. On a mental psychic level, the air element represents thoughts, different thought forms, the whole spectrum of thinking, Cheerful, happy, gloomy, or depressed, discursive thinking, the inner dialogue, analytical thinking, telepathy, telepathy, and imagination. The earth element represents all that is solid and heavy, such as bones, organs, flesh, hair, and teeth. On a mental psychic level, the earth element represents safety, prosperity, trust, poverty, wealth, perseverance, body consciousness, body awareness, greed and ownership. On a relationship level, the earth element represents steady relationships, sensuality, touching, giving and taking, exchanging and trading. 
the fire element. Traditionally, wands symbolize fire. I use the image of the flame. The flame symbolizes growth, sun, and light. Fire is dynamic, expansive, wild, destructive, and cleansing. The flame also stands for heat, enlightenment, maturity, and the growth process. In order to burn, fire needs substance, matter. On a physical level, the fire element represents maturing, digesting, heat, warmth, the transformation of food, sexuality, movement, and energy. On a mental psychic level, the fire element represents quick action, physical strength, love, anger, bodily expression, transformation of emotions and imagination. On a relationship level, the fire element represents sexuality, intimacy, inspiration, celebration, singing, dancing, and creativity. I actually love the way she's uh, describing the elements as related to the tarot. Then she describes the numbers, number one, number two. Number one is indivisible and the one from which everything arises. Two arise from the one or the ace and becomes the color, of, becomes the opposite or the counterpole of one. Three is the beginning of something new. One gives birth to two, two give birth to three. Three give birth to the myriad of things. Number four is an ordinal number and a structural number. Four elements, four seasons, four directions, four character types. The square is the symbol for the earth element. Number five is a square with the point. Five is a number of transition. Number six represents harmony. Its basic form is a triangle pointing upward and a triangle pointing downward. Opposites that unite in harmony. Number seven is the number of the mysterious, the riddle, and the paradox, the number of change. Number eight is made up of two times four, the symbol of infinity. Eight stands for balancing that which is out of balance. Number nine is made up of three times three. The nine is the sacred number of the feminine. And number 10 is the last one of this cycle and consists of one and zero. This number is related to the ace and makes visible its hidden potential. All right, and then we have interpretations. I really can't spend any more time going through the interpretations for each individual card, but I do want to share the cards with you. So this is a very a wonderful book. I can't wait to really read it. A work of 22 years has finally come to an end. This is the first complete edition of the Marguerite Peterson Tarot, containing suggestions on how to interpret the cards by the artist herself. Awesome. This is much more in-depth than your typical little white book, way beyond anything that you will receive from most other uh, companies as far as information on the tarot. Wonderful, wonderful. So far I'm loving it and I haven't even looked at the cards yet. All right, let's undo the cards here. Okay, I'll give you my first impression of the cards themselves. Although the physical nature of the cards is not nearly as important as the artwork, but it's important to a certain degree because you have to you have to work with this deck and the physical uh, qualities of the deck have to resonate with you and you have to enjoy the deck in order to work with it. So offhand I can say this deck is very flexible. The cardstock is nice. The deck itself is large and oversized but it's matte. It's easy to flip through. And oh, I didn't want to put the cards out of order, but it looks like I already did. <laughs> okay. These cards are really a lovely quality. They're not too thick. They're thin like playing cards and they're very flexible. 
and take a look at the back. The back is a wonderful, wonderful, fiery sort of pattern, but it's got the cooler colors mixed in with the fire. It does not appear to be reversible. So if that's important to you, this, car, uh, this deck is not reversible. Really beautiful back of this deck. All right, let's go through the cards. I'm going to take just a minute here and uh, organize the cards so I don't take up too much of your time, and I'll be right back. Okay, let's move right into the cards. And I'm going to move these cards as close as I can so that you can get a good idea of the depth of the cards and the detail. This is the Fool, a pretty typical Fool image. We have the person nearing the cliff, sort of a um, totem animal next to that person. We have a uh, kind of an ominous clouds in the background, sort of a sun and moon surrounding the uh, Fool. So I don't want to spend a lot of time discussing each and every image because I don't want to take up too much of your time. But uh, we'll just go through these sort of quickly. Here is magic, which would be the equivalent of the magician. Here is the high priestess, intuition, going within knowledge, the empress, birth, creativity, imagination, nature, the emperor, structure, power, conformity, the basis on which you build something. Here we have the Hierophant, sort of a um, mentor or a teacher, institutional ideals, doing things the right way, the Hierophant. Here we have the lovers with the idea of duality, joining, affinity or closeness, affection, the lovers. Here we have the chariot, although in this deck it's called the charioteess, so that sort of puts a feminine spin on the card. We can see the um, the movers of the chariot there, the charioteess, who's controlling the movement of the chariot and uh, determining her destiny. A beautiful card. Here we have Justice, Justice at eight, so it's similar to the Toth deck or the older Marseille decks in that we have Justice at eight. We see the idea of balance. And to me, the uh, Justice card does fit with number eight. It just numer numerologically sort of fits. Number nine, the crone, which would be the hermit in the traditional deck. Uh, beautiful card, we have the idea of light, knowledge, seeking, the hermit. The retreat, perhaps. Here we have the Wheel of Life. In other decks, it's called simply the Wheel or the Wheel of Fortune. And we have the idea of change. I really love this wheel card. It's just beautiful. As one situation gives way, something else follows the wheel. Here we have Strength at 11. We have the uh, sort of the typical image of the woman and the beast. 
the taming of the baser aspects of the human. We have aspects of the moon here. Strength. The hanged man. Pretty typical hanged man image. Getting a new perspective. Here we have death. This reminds me of the um, Osho Zen death card. One thing gives way to another. A very typical theme in tarot in general. Here we have Mediatrix. <clears throat> in place of uh, Temperance, we have the rainbow, the merging of the elements. She's got uh, different elements on both arms. It's a beautiful Temperance card, but we call it Mediatrix in this deck. Then we have the Devil. The tower, again the idea of transition or change, crumbling of old institutions, something new coming. The star, hope, regeneration, rebirth, the star. Ooh, the moon. This is a beautiful moon card. It's it's rather traditional in that we have the two pillars. We've got the uh, crustacean here. We've got the uh, wolf and the dog, symbolizing uh, wild nature and tame nature. We've got a path. We've got water. Man coming up to the primal sea. The moon. Here we have the sun. Gorgeous and pretty self-explanatory. And we have Renewal, which is substituting for justice in the Rider Waite deck. Renewal. And the World, which symbolizes completion, the end of a journey, Success, unity, enlightenment, the world. Now you'll have to forgive me if you relate to tarot differently than I do. I generally look at the suits as a progression of the wheel of the year. And I first look at east or spring which is represented by swords or feathers in this deck. Then I look at south, flames or summertime, which is represented by flames in this deck. After summer, we move to autumn or cups. And then we move on after the autumn to winter, which is coins, pentacles, earth, and represented in this deck by coins. So here you see aces for each of these suits. And I'm going to move in so that you can get a little closer um, viewpoint of each one. Here we have the ace of feathers, ace of flames, ace of cups. Gosh, that's a beautiful card. I love that and the Ace of Coins. Moving along to the twos. Duality, choice, union, and depending on the element, you can uh, construct your own meaning. Here we have the Two of Feathers, a choice, a joining, a union, a crossroads related to your intellect, knowledge, communication. Two of Feathers. Two of Flames, related to enterprise, an endeavor, a journey, 
something that you're passionate about, perhaps a hobby. Two of Cups. There we see the two figures facing each other, relationships, emotions, arts, two of cups. And there we have two of coins. And even though this is sort of an abstract deck, we sort of get the traditional feel of the two of coins, a balancing act. You get the idea of joining, motion, two different elements here, two of coins. Moving on to the threes. The threes are their fruition card. They bring fruit from the duality of the twos. We have the three of feathers. The three of flames. The three of cups. and the three of coins. Moving on to the fours. Remember the four is related to the emperor, which is a card of structure. There are four corners, four seasons. Uh, four is a sort of a fatherly uh, related card. So fours are very structured. We have the four of feathers. The Four of Flames, the Four of Cups, and the Four of Coins. Next up we have the Fives. Five is a number traditionally associated with a little bit of change, a little bit of stress, instability and then relate it to your particular element. We have the Five of Feathers, which would be a Five of Swords in a traditional deck. You can see the conflict pictured in this card. Five of Feathers. Five of Flames. Five of Water. And five of coins. Next we have the sixes. And the sixes are generally more of a stable card. Uh, harmonious, tranquility. We have the Six of Feathers, so that's harmony and tranquility as relates to the mind or intellect. We have the Six of Flames. You, ha you really do get the sense of triumph here, which is how the Rider Waite typically portrays the Six of Wands. The Six of Cups, Happy Memories, Tranquility in your relationships. That's a beautiful card. And the Six of Coins. Financial or family or sexual stability. Six of Coins. Next we have the Sevens of the various suits. Sevens are more magical, uh, more related to illusion, a little bit of conflict. There's a sense of stealthiness involved with the sevens. So we have the seven of feathers. We see the butterfly transforming. The seven of flames. The seven of cups. And the Seven of Coins. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Look at the growing, uh, something growing out of the earth there. Love that. Very typical uh, Rider Waite sort of an association with that card. Next we have the Eights. And the Eights are again a restructuring. They're like uh, a double of the four. Structure, order, 
we have the eight of feathers. There's a sense of entrapment within this eight. We have the eight of wands. Structure and order with your activity can mean that things are moving along. Next we have the Eight of Cups. Things are orderly, but you're probably thinking about moving along or things are completed here and it's time to leave. The Eight of Cups. And then we have the Eight of Coins, a card of achievement, accomplishment, growth. Lovely. Now we move along to the nines. Um, the epitome of the element. So when you have the nine of feathers or the nine of swords, you're coming into the the apex of the of the intellect or the thought or the idea. And sometimes this is associated with nightmares. It could be, uh, it could be the um, a great idea that's come to fruition, whose time has come. The nine of feathers or nine of swords. The nine of flames. Nine of cups. Great emotional happiness. Nine of Cups and Nine of Coins. You've achieved a great deal of material success, financial stability, home life that's wonderful. Nine of Coins. Next we have the Tens. The Tens are, numerologically speaking, the Tens are related to the Ones, related to the Magician. So the one card or the ten card is sort of a rebirth, a renewal. It's a happy sort of a sensation for that particular element. We have the ten of feathers. So an idea whose time has come and gone, it's time to start something new. The ten of flames. The great undertaking that you have been working on all these years is completed and it's time to move along. The Ten of Cups. A great uh, amount of emotional stability, happiness in your relationships. The cycle is complete, your family is complete. Ten of Cups. And then we have Ten of Coins job satisfaction, um, financial security, great health, great wealth, ten of coins. All right, this deck comes out of the box with the first court cards being shown to you are the mother cards. Mother is associated with water and mother of feathers is the union of water with air, mother of feathers. Here we have mother of flames, the joining of water and flame. You can really see that with the blue mixed in with the uh, red, mother of flames. Mother of cups, that is the water element and the water suit joined together, Mother of Cups. A great deal of um, uh, emotional support being given, uh, intuition, nurturing, that sort of a sense with this card. And then we have the Mother of Coins, which is the union of earth and water. 
Mother of Coins. After the Mother cards, we have the Father. Father is associated with fire. Fire of air, or Father of feathers. Fire of fire, the Father of flames. Fire and water, the Father of cups. A great deal of power and uh, at the same time you've got that emotional support there. So you have someone who's powerful and yet can support you emotionally. A wonderful court card in my opinion, the Father of Cups. And we have the Father of Coins. That's earth and fire. A very strong, strong masculine card. Father of Coins. Right next in this deck, we have presented to us the daughter cards. And the daughter would be the earth element. And then depending on the particular suit, we have daughter of feathers would be the earth element combined with air. Daughter of feathers. The earth element combined with fire is Daughter of Flames. The earth element combined with water, Daughter of Cups. The earth element combined with the earth element, so you're doubling up on your earthiness here, the Daughter of Coins. And that's the uh, cards that they're calling daughter cards here have traditionally been viewed as the prince or the page cards. So uh, they're considered to be somewhat students, initiates of the particular element. So you can view those that way. And the very last uh, set of cards we're going to look at are the sun cards, which would be, this is S-U-N, and those would be the equivalent of the knight cards in most decks, not the Toth decks. The knight cards and the Toth decks are equivalent to kings. But this is a, a prince or knight. And it would be associated with the air element. So for the son of feathers, we have air of air. This is the altruistic warrior. We have Sun of Flames, which would be air and fire combined. We have Sun of Cups, which would be air combined with water. So this is your, uh, your seeker. These, these cards are seekers and the knights are generally pictured on horseback. They're a card of movement, of seeking, of knowledge. So Son of Cups. Someone who's seeking to know about the uh, the more unknown side of life which is represented by water. Son of Coins which would be air combined with earth. Very Torian looking card there. The student of agriculture, industry, uh, something, something related to the household or a farm or something along those lines. So, I hope you've enjoyed this review of the Marguerite Peterson Tarot. It's just been a very brief review. I haven't had a chance to give any in-depth study to the cards, but I just wanted to show you what the cards look like. The artwork is gorgeous. Uh, to me, as someone who reads tarot and elementally, it's very resonant with me. It gives me a deep sense of connection to the cards. So I hope you enjoyed this as much as I've enjoyed putting it together for you. Um, leave me a comment, like, and share, and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Good night.